All right, hello everyone. So my name is Patrick Sannon. I'm from um, Uzi Lugano, and I also work at ETH Zurich. Um, first author is Dave May, who couldn't be here today, so I'll be giving the talk. Um, so I'll be talking about, as the title says, extreme scale multi grid components in Petsy, in particular, um, a component we're calling PC Telescope, which explains that little graphic up there. Um, so the outline of the talk will be some motivation for why this is a required piece of software and why we developed it, um, some discussion of the actual implementation um, of the component, and a couple of use cases with some nice um, Petsy options uh, syntax for you. Uh, then I'll show a couple of numerical experiments um, on the supercomputer, and then I'll have a slide about um, feature development and requests for uh, requests. Okay, so we'll start with um, just some background on why we would even need a component um, such as PC telescope. So this is the sort of simplest form of geometric multigrid. Um, we have some linear system to solve. Um, we can smooth by applying here a rich degeneration um, with some damping factor omega. Um, we smooth several times. We compute a residual. We restrict it to a coarser grid. Um, we solve exactly. Uh, we interpolate back to the fine grid, um, smooth again, and repeat the process. And of course, the coarse grid solve can be replaced with recursive multi-grid solves um, to introduce an n-level method as opposed to a two-level method. Um, the ingredients in this um, algorithmically and also as far as software is concerned will be some sort of mesh hierarchy, so some way to describe um, the geometry of the problem, the topology of the problem. Um, a set of maps between the elements of that hierarchy, so restriction and interpolation operators. Um, some operators which will act as smoothers, so these will be things that will, be, will abstract as linear solvers. Usually there's something like SOR, Richardson iteration, as we saw in the first slide. And then, of course, a coarse grid solver, which is generally thought of as an exact solver, but which could be some sufficiently accurate iterative solver as well. So this might be common knowledge, but why would we care about multigrid? Um, the main motivation is, of course, that it's a theoretically optimal algorithm, um, at least in the sequential case. Um, it can be provably give order n algorithms to solve interesting PDEs um, to discretization error. So if we look at this, um, this chart here, courtesy of Jed Brown, um, we can see that if we take some problem here, in this case, a 3D Stokes problem um, that we work on, um, and we extrapolate the scaling behavior of any other leading solver, essentially, once we start getting into even moderately high degrees of freedom, so here 10 to the 6, um, 10 to the 8, the multi-grid solver becomes the only viable alternative, which justifies essentially an unlimited amount of effort at the extreme scale um, to develop software to make this um, even more efficient. So within multi-grid hierarchies, you might wonder why are more levels um, required? The simple answer is that they are required to actually get this order and scalability. Um, this uh, coarse grid solve here, you see my pointer? That's not actually very visible. Anyway, the coarse grid solver um, is in general itself not a scalable solver. So that has to be of a constant size to get an overall scalable algorithm. Um, so the, the smallness of the, of the coarse grid problem is, of course, essential. Um, we can see this in a simple example from Petsy. So you can run this on your laptop. Um, I actually ran this on Pitstain to try and get it more consistent, but the results were almost the same as on Dave's laptop in the end. Um, we can see if we run a two-level method, this is just a 3D Laplacian example. Um, the time to solution does not scale optimally. Um, as we double the uh, dimension in each of three dimensions, which of course would optimally give an A times increase in the, sol in the solution time, we can see that um, this blows up for a two-level method. It behaves nicely for a n-level method. Um, so this is nice, but of course, in parallel, there are many barriers to actually being able to use as many multi-grid levels as we would like to use. Um, some of these are purely implementation-based. If we're using a finite element code, often, often there's some kind of restriction that we could only have one element per core. Um, in many implementations, you would uh, be able to distribute sort of zero work or zero degrees of freedom to ranks in your communicator. Um, of course, this is, you have to be careful with this in that any subsolver you apply to that has to respect that and actually do zero work. Um, and if you're calling collective operations, this can still impose an overhead. Um, perhaps a more serious reason is that there are um, physical reasons that you wouldn't be able to actually solve accurately um, on a coarse grid solve that was too small. So here we have an example, which might be a little hard to see, but there are many viscous inclusions inside this um, Stokes scenario. And coarsening this with rediscretized operators anyway, um, the convergence breaks down if you coarsen too much. Um, Galerk and coarse grid operators work better in this case, but obviously require more storage. Um, so the question sort of becomes, if we have a multi-grid hierarchy, which is 
fundamentally an all-to-all -all communication pattern. We're going to have some sort of um, complexity lower bound that looks something like log p. Um, we have to do some kind of communication between all the degrees of freedom, and the question becomes, how do we do that in parallel um, in a way that's useful and also maintains optimal scalability? Um, so there's many ways to do this. Um, a convenient way to do this, um, at least from the point of view of our codes, which use PETC, is you can drop in a scalable solver which already has agglomeration built into it um, as the coarse grid solver in your perhaps truncated V-cycle. So um, using a algebraic multigrid or GIMG in PETC works very nicely for this. Um, I learned a few minutes ago that uh, PCBDDC also has agglomeration built into it. Um, using hierarchical Krylov methods actually works quite well. This is a very interesting case because it's not an exact coarse grid solve, but can also give reasonably scalable results. Um, you can do redundant solves, so this is also easy to do in Betsy with PC redundant. This, of course, involves taking these small problems and solving them redundantly on all members of a communicator. As you can imagine, that can be kind of inefficient. Um, kind of the best solution that seems to be hit upon by many previous researchers is the idea of agglomeration. This is, as we coarsen our grid, we also um, coarsen the MPI communicator, if this is useful. So instead of solving on the entire machine, we'll actually solve on a smaller set of course, leaving some idle, but of course incurring less communication costs. Um, so this is well known. Um, it's not always implemented, though. So we'll change tax a bit here and just and point out some of the basic um, technical issues with doing this. If you, even if you have some sort of regular grid, um, there's often some ordering associated with the unknowns on each, um, on each processor. Um, we've shown a Z ordering here, which corresponds to um, what Petsy does by default. So I've drawn a Z, but it's actually a much more jagged Z. Um, to be able to repartition this, you would have to do um, some permutation of the unknowns to put them in the order expected by a coarser MPI communicator, um, and then perform uh, an actual scatter operation, which will move them to a smaller communicator, do your solve, and then unscatter back. So this is exactly what our implementation does. Um, it's quite simple, um, but having this done for you in a composable way is really the idea. So as an example of a, an application which uses this, this is from Dave May's um, Stokes Flow codes. Um, here we show a strong scaling experiment. So we show strong scaling here because these are faster to show than the extreme scaling cases in which this agglomeration would really be effective. Um, so we have a Stokes Flow solver. We use three different coarse grid solvers here. Um, one is a hierarchical Krelov method. Um, another is an algebraic multigrid solver. And another one is a uh, repartitioned approach like we just showed. Um, so the idea here is that as we go from 64 to 4,096 ranks, we can actually see reasonably good strong scaling efficiency with all three of these. Um, the best one, however, is this rediscretized solver. Um, this is, of course, perhaps not fair in that the, the algebraic multigrid started off doing better on 64 ranks. But in any case, the rediscretized solver actually performs the best. Um, the problem, of course, is that we'd like to be able to use this in all of our codes, but whereas the first two options were quite easy to do in software, we plug in existing um, interfaces, the third one didn't have an implementation in PETSI um, until now, which is what this paper introduces. So we introduce a new preconditioner, which is called PC Telescope. Um, it's meant to fill kind of a, a place in the set of building blocks for multigrid. Um, this is kind of a nice chart which shows a level of grayness of multi-grid methods. Um, right in the middle here are agglomerated methods for structured and unstructured grids. So we focused on structured grids. Um, towards the end, I'll kind of give an appeal for any users who are interested in unstructured grids, because this will be a logical next step um, for the library. Um, so as I said, this is not new or particularly difficult to implement. The problem is that most codes do, don't start out as extreme scale codes. Um, It'd be hard, it'd be, it would be quite easy to hard code in something that would not allow you to do this agglomeration if you decided it was necessary um, later on. Um, it's nice to have this as a composable building block in that often you do not have predictive enough performance models to guess what coarsening factors you should need, how many times you should do it. Um, this might be problem or physics dependent. Um, it's also nice to have this as a building block in that agglomeration has some uses outside of multigrid, which I'll show later. Um, so for these reasons, we implement um, our telescoping agglomeration code as a preconditioner within Petsy. So this is essentially something that has matrix multiply semantics. It um, is usually thought of as a linear operator, even though it doesn't have to be. Uh, it applies to a vector and spits out another vector. In this case, it applies to a vector and spits it out again on a smaller communicator. Um, and we'll focus also on things that will interact with Petsy's DM class, which is the um, domain manager class. I believe that's the acronym. Um, 
So the design philosophy is really just taken from Petsy's design philosophy. Um, this is, of course, the portable extensible toolkit for a scientific computation, but you could also replace the last ones with solver composability, which is really a killer feature of it. Um, these building blocks that you see listed here um, can allow you to construct most effective scalable solvers that you'll find in the literature, um, and more are being added every day, as you'll hear in the next talk. Um, Runtime configurability is very important for the reasons I just mentioned in that performance models for the most interesting problems are usually not predictive enough um, to allow you to pick these parameters ahead of time. So I'll show some of these options prefixes for the rest of the talk, so I'll briefly say what these mean. These are just concatenated sets of prefixes which refer to solvers and nested solvers. So if I write something like this, it means that I have named some solver Stokes. This is my top level solver. Um, within that I have a field split preconditioner, with this prefix, I have a multi-grid preconditioner within that. Um, within each level of that multi-grid preconditioner, I can apply a, another preconditioner, which in this case will be my PC telescope component, and then I can apply a value to that field. So these get a bit long, but they do allow you to um, define very complicated solver hierarchies from the command line, um, test things out in an interactive shell if you want to. Um, So sort of the two key um, other components of Petsy that our um, new preconditioner interacts with are the DM and PCMG classes. So DM is the domain manager class. This has, um, as of now, two probably the most used um, implementations, which are DMDA, which is a regular grid, and DMplex, which is an unstructured grid. Um, there are more classes on top of this for particle and cell methods are being developed, um, uh, power networks, these sorts of things. Um, the multi-grid preconditioner is, in fact, aware of the of the DM class, so it's not entirely obvious that a solver library should even be including discretization information, but for a solver like geometric multigroup, which is so so intimately tied to discretization, um, it does make sense to include these things in the library, and that means that our agglomeration can also be aware of this DM um, and use the information. So the way this is actually implemented is quite simple. Um, it's not the most efficient design as far as memory footprint is concerned. Um, for the target use case, which is multigrid, this is not usually a huge problem in that the coarse grid operators um, become small very quickly. Um, however, if someone uses this and has an issue, there are optimizations we could do to, re re to lower this memory footprint a little bit. Um, so essentially what uh, the preconditioner will do is take the global communicator or whichever communicator is being operated on, it will coarsen it, um, and then map an assembled operator uh, to, the smaller, to the smaller communicator. Um, this pre-partitioning has to take into account the ordering, as I uh, presented earlier, and it can do this automatically for DMDA objects. So if you want to work with a regular grid, one of the uh, um, examples in Petsy, you can do this out of the box without defining your own, um, your own permutation uh, functions. So now, uh, just a few use cases of how you could use this as a flexible tool. Um, perhaps the simplest one, um, but one which I found actually quite useful in practice for, for debugging purposes for multigrid or for uh, tuning multigrid, um, is you could take something which is a sequential solver or something which you'd like to run on a subset of nodes. Um, for example, if I have a distributed LU solver and I would like to run it only on a single node in my, um, in my machine, I can do this. Or if I want to run it on eight nodes or eight ranks and I want them all to be in a single node, I can also do this with this functionality. So I'll just define um, a preconditioner for my or my course level solver I'm in my multi-grid hierarchy, and I'll call it of type telescope. It has a parameter to specify the reduction factor, which is how much it coarsens the MPI communicator by. Um, and I can even define a type um, that says how those ranks are distributed across the nodes. So this is the case um, pictured in the picture here. So these options here correspond exactly to what's in the cartoon. Um, so here I have a set of three different MPI communicators all nested. Um, the first one reduces by a factor of four, the second one by a factor of 16 to a single core, assuming, of course, this was run on 64 MPI ranks. Um, so these get sort of long, but you can see the, the pattern here. Um, and of course, the library could be extended to generate these hierarchies automatically if this was, um, if this was deemed necessary. Uh, the nice thing about this is I could write my, my solver using these options, and I can add more later as I, as I make my problem bigger. So I've actually done this exact thing recently, which is taking a problem um, which was quite small, and scaling it up. Um, when I ran into implementation issues, like I could only have one element per core, um, 
adding in a few more options like this makes it much easier to continue with my experiments without really rewriting any code at all. Um, a very powerful way to use this as well, as well is to use a hybrid multigrid hierarchy. So um, this is something that's covered a lot more in, uh, in Dave's paper from a couple years ago where I took this uh, graphic from. Um, but here we can actually use different types of multigrid hierarchies on our different communicators. So we go from a rediscretized multigrid hierarchy to a Galerkin multigrid hierarchy to an algebraic multigrid hierarchy um, on the coarse grid. And this now frees us up to do this on different sized communicators if that is going to be more efficient. So a couple of other fun ones are you can um, use uh, subdomain solves on um, fewer ranks um, per node in your supercomputer if you'd like to. And I'll show an example in a few slides where we use this to run a GPU-based solver um, without having to resort to any, resort to any threading. Um, you can also do things where if you have some uh, solver, for, exa for example, an ILU solver, or an ILU smoother, um, perhaps in, a, uh, in an ice flow simulation which would have a preferential direction, you can take this automatically generated new DM, so a new grid, um, and partition it um, differently in different directions. So in this case, we maintain strong coupling in the Z direction um, with our agglomerated communicator. So finally, I'll show some more um, numbers here. So here are some profiling numbers for the setup and application times for the new preconditioner on pit stain. Um, so first we show a, a 3D Laplacian example. And um, we can see the setup times do increase, but they remain uh, relatively small. The application times are pretty flat um, in the chart on the top right as well as in the um, graph on the lower left. Um, Right, so we can see we can take this up to uh, 13,000 cores with no problem, um, and we can even run it even bigger. Um, you would expect the application phase to be quick because it's all um, generally local scattering operations. And we can repartition at scale, so this is taking a problem which scales very badly with a two-level method um, and could not be scaled further because of a um, implementation detail. And we can show that uh, we should we see about 100% speed up um, in adding a third level, this is not too surprising as the coarse grid solver um, is not scalable, but the point here is that we were able to do this from the command line with one option um, as opposed to entirely rewriting our code. And we can see pretty good results. Um, even with this, this uh, relatively easy problem, this does not have variable coefficients. So as I said earlier, um, some problems are limited in their coarse grid size uh, purely by the coefficient distribution. So this would allow us to also push past scalability barriers, hopefully with a very reusable tool. Um, an interesting thing we can do with, do with this on pit stain is actually run uh, GPU smoothers um, without any additional um, introduction of threading or anything like this. Um, one problem that I'm sure many people have run into is that you have several CPU cores to one GPU on a compute node. Um, this allows us to define an MPI communicator with one rank per node, so there's some hit in the CPU parts of that, of that communicator, but if most of the work there is happening on the GPU, this allows us to actually accelerate um, a sparse matrix multiply um, using essentially components that were already in PETSI. So we used uh, the Vienna CL um, linear algebra tools that are already interfaced to PETSI. We used our new tool um, to do this agglomeration, and we were, allowed, we were able to just take um, this example here, which is not listed. I'm sorry, this is another standard um, PETSI example, and speed it up from the command line. Um, so we see some modest speed up. This is about in line with what we would expect from the memory bandwidth. Um, of the Tesla on pit stained. Um, we can see some modest speed ups in, in total solve times for a simple problem as well using that same technique. So these are not earth shaking, but they were largely for free, um, at least in terms of implementation effort after we did the PETSI work. So the idea here is not necessarily to show that we can optimize the code to use the GPU extremely well, but we would like to be able to try it out very quickly, um, which is the idea of this composable solver. Um, so the last thing I'll say is that we are considering um, extending this to unstructured meshes as supported by the DMplex um, class in Petsy. Um, we haven't done this yet for lack of a user, but if you are that user, um, we would be interested in looking at it more. Um, the process will be largely the same. There's more information that would be needed to agglomerate it, or that would be that would be needed to agglomerate um, automatically if we were to make this um, easy enough for the user. Um, but this is still all possible. One proposal is simply to pass the the task of creating the communicator back to the um, 
back to the user. So we'd have to introduce some function like this. If this could be implemented for a wide enough class of standard problems, it would become useful. So to conclude, um, hopefully we've shown that this uh, processor agglomeration is a useful technique to have. It certainly has proven that in the literature. Um, the problem with it, of course, is people have to keep re-implementing it um, and that they might not do so um, purely for practical reasons once they've decided to scale their code. Um, we've shown that with a simple design, we can actually encapsulate it as a preconditioner implementation within Petsy, which is already a very composable library. Um, we need to be careful to pass null space information about operators um, and any attached domain, domain information um, as we do this, because of course, if we're using this preconditioner within multigrid, for example, we still, need, we still need to have information about the domain which the multigrid can use automatically. Um, and beyond multigrid, it can be used to um, do adjustments that are needed for um, various reasons, mainly software-based, um, for subdomain solves. If I had a factorization-based solver, for example, um, I might like to have a larger sub subdomain. I can do this with agglomeration. Um, and that works nicely with the GPUs, especially in this flat MPI environment that's the current state of, of uh, Petsy code, including ours. Um, so if you'd like to try this out, this component is in Petsy 3.7, which is the current release. Um, it's implemented as a PC. The current implementation um, will work with assembled operators and unassembled operators and is aware of the DMDA regular grid class. Um, as I said, if you're interested in unstructured meshes, that's not there yet, but it could be. Um, so to conclude, uh, these are the addresses for Petsy. If you want to use the, um, the option where you can pick um, contiguous or strided um, subcommunicator gener sub generation, that was added barely too late, so that's actually in the master branch of Petsy. Um, if you're interested in DMplex unstructured grids with this, uh, there's Dave's email address and my email address. Um, or if you're going to be at the Petsy users meeting in Vienna in a couple weeks, that would be a great place to talk us, to us as well. And thank you for your attention.